Right, so welcome to The Fifth Element, the first podcast from Relicon. My name's Adam. And my name's James Cranklin. And what we're going to do in this first episode is just to tell you a little bit about ourselves, about Relicon as a business, and just go through a few things as to what we've been doing up until this point and uh, where we're going from here. Okay, Relicon is a business which, which connects the aspirational entrepreneurs of the local region to the resources that they need to scale. There are 24,500 micro businesses within this region, um, of which at least 10% of them are aspirational and looking to grow. They're already employing the five to nine as opposed to the naught to four. But the bulk of our businesses are micro businesses. And to get them to believe and to aspire to be bigger than they are, to move to that 15 to 30 employment level um, is a real challenge and one that Redicon um, is eager to address. See, we're based in Colchester in Essex and what we see quite frequently is people just getting up early in the morning, getting on the train, travelling up to London, travelling to employment in the dark, travelling home in the dark, exhausted throughout the week and then the weekend is meant to be quality time but just isn't. So we initially thought that we were going to have, try and encourage people to come out of London and set up set up shop in, in Colchester in Essex. But we really flipped that idea and thought actually what we want to stop is that hemorrhage of talent from Colchester, from Essex, from our region going to London and actually create an environment here which is uh, attractive to people. People would want to stay, businesses would want to, to see this as an opportunity to create their businesses here and develop their businesses here. And that's what Relicon is going to be doing. We're taking all these disparate uh, resources available to entrepreneurs and bringing it all under one name, under one service, under one community to allow entrepreneurs to to thrive in whatever it is that they choose to do. And I think community is a really crucial part of that, the whole development for Redicon. It's um, a lot of the work that I've done um, since moving from my career in London to this particular region has been about developing and growing communities. And I think it's a really important facet of the region and why regional um, development and regional innovation systems function that much better um, than national ones is because we are connected as a body. Um, we are connected by the air we breathe, by the same concerns, by the same issues that we face as a region. And bringing some of that connectivity together and putting it into a framework where we're saying to people, if we all do better, then everyone does better. If we can grow businesses locally and regionally, then everybody benefits from that level of engagement and vibrancy. And the other area that I really want to kind of focus upon and which drives us in Redicon is the issue about jobs and quality jobs. So many people, as you said, Adam, get on a train and go to London backwards and forwards but equally, what we want to do is we want to try and stop that hemorrhaging by creating quality jobs. And a lot of micro businesses, not for any fault of their own, but principally be through resources or a lack of resources or simply the time and effort that the entrepreneurs and business owners have to invest in their people, they don't do that. They don't create quality jobs. But it's when you get to the next level of that development that we stand a real chance of creating um, a, uh, a need or a, a satisfying a need for quality work where people are well paid, where people are, uh, where businesses invest in people and where people grow within the business. And that's a real driver for, uh, for why we do this. And I know from your perspective, it's very much about your family, your children. From my perspective, it's very much about my grandchildren. So it's what opportunity they will have in 20 years' time to actually make a real difference to themselves and to the region.
Yeah, absolutely. I think it'd be worth probably just stepping back a bit just to sort of talk a bit about ourselves and what it is that we've done previous to being here and talk about next year, the future, about what Relicon's going to turn into, hopefully, in March. So, as I said, my name's Adam Roxby. I, I suppose the benefit for people watching and the people listening uh, is that I'm fairly new to business and will hopefully be a kind of uh, ask some of the embarrassing beginner questions that people may have had but have been a bit too uh, self-conscious to ask. So uh, I started as a nurse and I'm still a registered and practicing nurse but I've got a real love of technology and creativity and using technology to tell, tell stories which is how I ended up being director of the communications here at Redicon, uh, trying to be creative with technology and use it to, to enhance people's experiences. So I've always had a, a passion to, to use technology and I started off by creating podcasts and audio and video stuff for, for environmental charities. So environmentalism and technology and caring through nursing have all amalgamated into using technology to care for a business region. So that's kind of how I found found James and found Relicon uh, through looking through for business advice and getting that advice from, from yourself. And I suppose that brings me on to, to how you ended up being here. Well, how I ended up being here. Um, I am probably one of those people that left on a daily basis for 30 odd years, traveling backwards and forwards to London, not spending enough time with my family and spending more time working. And I think um, that, that in itself um, obviously has shaped a lot of what I believe and what I feel. Um, but my background is I started out in um, various industries. I started out in travel and tourism. Um, I've always been involved with small business and enterprise uh, ever since I was a young child as my father and my parents were both small business owners and um, we were immersed in that culture of, um, of being self-employed and the vagrancies and the ups and downs. I actually chose a more of a um, traditional corporate path because, because I saw the challenges that business owners faced and probably because I felt that I wanted to learn if there were other areas around um, developing businesses and growing businesses that I could take with me on my journey. So. Uh, I ended up working in finance for 28 years. I developed and was very much involved um, at the front end of that environment, working in the trading field, so de delivering and developing teams of people to work together, but also growing businesses and scaling businesses. So I've got a, um, an understanding that to grow businesses is about leadership. It's about developing the people around you. It's about changing mindsets from being closed to open uh, and it's being a sponge and it's absorbing that information and I think um, when I was made redundant in 2011 from the city I developed um, a local community of practice around um, career change and grew that network to around about 180 people and transitioned quite a few people into different forms of employment and work. I then built a educational uh, business locally. It was a franchise, so I have experience of the franchise models. Um, and that informed me again about the value that they bring and the values that, um, that they operate under. And that, that um, I let go after about four years of uh, performing it. And, you know, and I learned a huge amount in that particular process and was a challenging um, time. But I also got to involved at that particular point with the enterprise agencies, and that's where you and I met. Um, and I was supporting uh, local startup businesses um, through a business advisory um, work and through workshops and through the development and facilitating um, training and that kind of thing. So all of that journey, that trajectory has informed uh, my understanding of business development, my understanding of how to take businesses on a journey and get them to grow and scale. Um, but also, and probably kind of more importantly, with next door to all of that level of practical aspects, I invested very heavily in my own education. So I completed my degree and I'm now in the process of doing a master's as well, which again brought me in contact 
with the university and I worked and work, still work very closely with the student population. So I'm very fortunate to hold the role of entrepreneur in residence at the university, which is a kind of grandiose title for somebody that offers business support, mentoring, but also imbues the culture of the university in terms of enterprise and initiative. Yeah, so it, it's worth saying that we're here in the Relicon office uh, on a very blustery and windy day on the University of Essex campus. So we've spoken a little bit about Relicon as maybe a little bit of a nebulous term, but let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's say that we've said that we're going to address this this problem, this epidemic of talent seeping away from, from our towns. How are we going to be doing that is a good question. We've got a membership offer. We've we have. Them. It's a low cost membership offer that um, provides access to um, a platform and we're developing the platform at this very moment in time. The platform will be a one-stop shop, a central place for aspirational entrepreneurs to find and connect with the resources that they need. Um, we don't deliver everything, so that's not part of that process. We do deliver um, events um, and some of the entrepreneurial events, that, again, that people will have access to will include boot camps and uh, weekenders. We also run a monthly uh, event at the moment, which is called the Informed Entrepreneur, which happens on the last Wednesday of every month. It takes place at the Innovation Centre. And the idea behind that is about exploration, about entrepreneurial opportunity, um, and getting business owners who spend an awful lot of time at the coal face of their business, just maybe a couple of hours of reflection on what's happening within the environment, globally, nationally, locally, what sort of businesses are getting funded, the challenges of being in business, that kind of thing. But it's also a part of developing that community um, and bringing people together on a social learning journey. So the, the low-cost membership model or the low-cost access to, uh, to Redicon opens the doorways to that. It opens the doorways to the networks that we know and we build. This particular platform will give people access to uh, events to uh, talent because we're very committed about connecting ourselves and the and the uh, entrepreneurs of the region directly to the local talent pool. Um, we hope there will be a challenge platform element to it. So again, getting businesses to recognise the value of um, placing challenges into a community and gaining feedback and direction and support. So opening up the mindset around that and being aware of the value of diversified thinking in that particular process. Um, we'll also um, be connecting people to grow on spaces. So um, there will be a, the opportunity if they're sitting in an office and it's a three or four man office and they're looking to think about where they need to be in the future, then we will be promoting and, um, uh, and marketing grow on spaces for people and for businesses to find new homes and, and develop from there. One of the key values of one of our key values is sustainability. And that's an important facet of what we're about. So a lot of the culture that we will be talking about will be eco innovation, open innovation culture, um, that we will be getting people to engage with and get people to understand that if they align their businesses to sustainability and sustainable goals, then they're giving their business additional added purpose. So that's the kind of membership offer that we've got. It's a platform, it's open to people to come and engage through it. There will be events, there will be events that they can attend. There will be work that we will do to prepare people for um, pitching events. So again, within the university, there will be more opportunities to engage with angel investors, with venture capital, um, platforms such as Campus Capital and things along those lines. And our job at Redicon is to help our community manage their narrative that much more effectively that they can engage in these pitching events and open up new avenues of funding that potentially they may not have explored or unwilling or unable to explore. Ordinarily, what we can expect from this podcast and what we're going to be sharing with you is not just tub thumping and talking about how, how great we are and why you should become a member. But we'll give you a little bit of news about what we're doing and about the membership offer and what's happening for members. But also in the future, in future episodes, we'll be going through business ideas, business concepts, 
a little bit of things to think about what's happening in the sort of world of of business and I'll try and explore those issues with James uh, to tease out information that will help you in your day-to-day -day business. So the membership offer as it stands is not quite ready for, for release. We, as James said, we're working uh, with various people to bring that to a, a place where we can talk about it publicly and get it, get it ready for people to be interested and sign up for it. But currently, if people just go to relocon, R-E-L-O-C-O-N dot co dot UK, then you'll find our website and find out everything you can about where we are at the moment. And there'll be details on how to get in touch with us. And once you do get in touch with us, we can put you on a mailing list and send you more information. So the final thing to say is the, the Fifth Element podcast. Why is it called The Fifth Element? Um, I think it's called The Fifth Element because it's about... Um, people and humanism and connecting um, at a particular level which is perhaps less tangible but certainly is massively valuable in terms of building our knowledge and our understanding and developing a learning and open culture within the area so that we can drive business. Absolutely so we're we're very much open to uh, engagement we're very much open to people's suggestions and questions and if you've got things that you want us to talk about in the future if there's some business ideas and knowledge that you'd like us to try and cover then by all means get in touch uh, this is the start of our journey as well as your journey with relicon we we want to be open and share what it is that we're doing and why you should be involved so like i say this is a video and audio podcast as well so you can feel free to listen to it wherever you get your podcasts from or check it out on YouTube. So I guess it's just time for me to say thank you very much and we'll speak to you well, really soon. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>